It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain. Good morning. Good morning, Freeman. Good morning to, uh, well, it's not morning at all. It's uh, good evening. Whatever time it is that you're listening to this, <laughs> exactly, it's good enough. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's confusing, you know, now that we're um, big syndicated people. Yeah, we don't know when we're on. We don't know when we're That's on. That's right. We'll get through it. Yep. So how is your, uh, how's your week been? Freeman? It's been very prosperous. A nice new haircut there. Thank you. Yeah. It's been, a, a, it's been a great week. Is this a paid promotional thing for uh, Supercuts or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> My wife did it. She insisted. It's time for you to get a proper haircut. So I did. I sat, went to an actual salon and uh, did the whole thing. And it was nice. I like it. Yeah, that's $80 right there. It is. Nice. It's expensive. <laughs> L.A. Well, it looks good on you. looks good uh, on you. Thank you, my friend. How are you? I'm really well. I've been um, really uh, busy and... Um, Good, exciting things going on. Yeah. Um, fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Cast our movie. Yeah. Um, I guess I can, can say. Can we talk about I it? I guess we can say a little bit. We can say Peter Fonda is. Um, Fantastic actor. He's a fabulous actor. Fabulous actor. So he, we'll say more from week to week as we go forward. So that's so the first little bit. First little, little bit. Little crumbs. We'll give fall, a little bit. Little, crumbs. little bit more. Based on, a, based on a story by Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. Power beautiful story. Writer of the Power of Now, beautiful story called Milton's Secret. Um, terrific, terrific story about mindfulness, stress, and mindfulness, or s- mindfulness as an antidote to stress. Um, we'll talk more about it as we very, go forward. Very Eckhart S. Very Eckhart S. Well, it's. I know. It's, he wrote it. Um, he wrote it. I that get would it. make it fairly Eckhart S. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, very busy and very, very exciting. Lots, lots of fun things going on. Nice. Lots of good things. You know, I've been thinking last week. Yeah. Um, actually, Part last that two too. weeks. <laughs> it was nice. It's nice every once in a while. <laughs> uh, a thought uh, floats through my brain. But I've been thinking about the conversation we had with, um, with Bob Proctor. Yeah. And I love the, uh, that, that, that bit about the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as, you know, really a spiritual... Um, a spiritual imperative, a kind of way that each of us is entitled, as it were, to a, a, a certain amount of... As our birthright. As a, as birthright. a metaphysical birthright. Yeah, to mm-hmm. liberty and to the pursuit of happiness. And I, and I was extending that to the notion of prosperity, mm-hmm. that we were entitled to prosperity, to be prosperous. But I was considering what that word means, because mm-hmm. I'm... I, I think personally, what it meant to me maybe ten years ago mm-hmm. is kind of different than what it means to me today. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, from your perspective, um, when I say prosperous, mm-hmm. what is your, what mm-hmm. does that look like, or how does that feel? I should say, how does it feel to you to say prosperous? I'm prosperous. God, I love that. I love that question. Um, I think first of all. You know, when you say, when we talk about um, entitlement, there's something about the word entitlement that causes people to push back. It and does. So, but there is, a, I understand in the way that you are uh, using it here. It is, uh, it is not so much the laying on uh, to others uh, the obligation of right. meeting my needs. No, not at all. But it is a, a deeper cut on entitlement that is... Um, uh, th- that has more to do with uh, grace, in the same way that yes. flight comes to a flight comes to an eagle, mm. uh, and um, and and petals unfold to a sunflower. Mm. Um, prosperity is a birthright uh, that, when we begin to connect with the elements of it, uh, unfolds in the same way. It's, I I, th- I love that. I, That's I think fantastic. Some of those elements. Prosperity. Oof. I don't think most people think of it that way. So I, I just want to pause most for a minute. Most th- people tend to think that they that it's about um, my impact. I am in a some kind of a struggle. I am in some sort of efforting situation, and uh, that's a developmentally appropriate relationship uh, when you see small children. Um, powering their way at their first steps. Sometimes they look like boxers as they slug it out <laughs> across the floor. <laughs> right. um, you know, they're learning to... Lots of bumps along that to, road. Um, ...to uh, their place in, a, in an environment. So 
the struggle is a uh, even plants they struggle their way through the hard clay or the hard packed dirt to to the light so it's a developmental process but that it unfolds is not a struggle it, we are we are keyed in to unfold gracefully and there are um, qualities of relationship to um, to to, to the energies that I, that I hold as being uh, energies of prosperity, there's that sense of knowing that I matter. Yeah. Uh, that I, ha that I have, have substance. Um, it's my relationship with dignity and um, a dignity in, in the sense of knowing that I am, um, that I have a soul and I have a spirit and I have a higher self. I have a relationship with the divine. Mm. There's a dignity that comes in that. And there is also on the other side, a sense of my relationship with the smaller, not less than, but the lesser aspects of myself that uh, are still, uh, still locked in still memory, still working their still way through the dirt, the still working the struggle, still yeah. holding life in particular ways. And, as I am held by the parts of me that are greater than me, I can also hold the parts of me that are less equipped to deal with the challenges that I meet in my present life as an adult. And out of that comes a certain dignity and a certain ability to respond to the challenges of life and a certain sense of being uh, self-determining, yes. co-creating. Yes. And um, those, that, that is a bountiful um, Stew. I love it too, and I love the perspective. the The idea that there's a developmental struggle, and I love the image of the plant working its way through the earth, with the ultimate promise, the promise of blossoming. Right. It's a developmental struggle, until uh, one develops. Sometimes not everybody does, and in, uh, in no, not everybody does at the same cadence, or, or if ever, but. Uh, uh, it's a developmental struggle until we mature to a place where we see that it's not. We have a guest on uh, uh, who's joining us uh, in a moment uh, who um, has a very different relationship uh, to um, abundance, to flow, to prosperity, than, a, sure. to, than, um, than the aforementioned uh, struggle model. <laughs> That's right. There's a different <laughs> way of approaching a tired, this. It's a very tired yeah very tired model no that's we right. don't do a lot of struggling for air and water i mean there are exceptions there are people who unfortunately with things like asthma and every breath is hard one but for the most part we take these things with uh we take them lightly and we uh, desire we expect and we imagine that effortlessly. There will be, effortlessly. Be effortless yeah and we tend to to um marshal all of our anxieties into a certain silo. Well, uh, that's that where we're getting is, to, yes. Uh, that silo is uh, largely financial abundance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't so much do it around um, my, uh, around relationships. We don't do it around uh, health. I mean, some, some do, clearly. I think a lot of people do. But, uh, but, but what you were saying, uh, and, I, and I definitely want to bring our guest in to talk about this, because obviously this is, this is her wheelhouse, but, but just... It's her whole house, it's not just the wheelhouse. Not just the wheels, house, just the wheels right. give her she credit. It's the whole it's block. Her, it's her whole block. <laughs> yes, okay, but the point being that uh, the effortlessness, the grace, the, 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 the blossoming into a kind of understanding that, oh yeah, of course, is a beautiful way of looking at it. And even the way, the generous way of looking back at the, the, the road to get to a, a moment or the moments in time where we fully uh, embrace and accept that which is You ours. look back with a open heart and an open mind and a, and a real, um, maturity that allows us to have a compassion uh, an active caring that is born out of having been through that suffering but we don't necessarily have to climb back into that uh, box of ugh. every once in a while we slip back into it can you tell uh, us who's I've, coming I on I to talk to us about I this i don't just slip i, I just jump in <laughs> <and> <laughs> land back in it. well why don't we welcome our our guest i, I am really thrilled uh to have uh, to welcome maria simone today she's 
the founder and CEO of Passion to Prosperity International. She produces the Enlightened Entrepreneur Summit. She's the author of Passion to Prosperity, Instant Ways to Profit from Your Skills and Talents. Fantastic book. I could use uh, some instant ways. She's been interviewed in Success Magazine and Business Week. She's appeared on ABC, Fox TV News, and all of that is relative potatoes because <laughs> she's now <laughs> our guest That's on Cutting Edge right. Consciousness. And we, are, we are thrilled to have you with us on KVTA and KKZZ. <laughs> um, welcome, Maria. Thank you. I'm, you know, I almost don't want to be on right now. I really just want to listen to you <laughs> and have your conversation. Well, you can come over to dinner anytime. That's the beauty <laughs> is we get to hang out we with you personally. We get to hang out where we want, so that's a whole Thank different you. thing. <laughs> it's a fabulous conversation. I'm loving this so far. So let's talk about this. This whole way of the struggle almost has a life of its own. It's 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 a natural developmental stage to sort of feel like it's work, and, and obviously some of this is inherited. It's not even necessarily ours. We sort of bring with us the baggage, as it were, of, of a whole tribe of folks saying, you know, work is work. It's got to be hard and, you know, buck up, kid. And that's the way the world works. But there is another perspective, which Barnett was alluding to, which has nothing to do with that. that I that, alluded. That. You did. <laughs> you did. You were you were I suggesting was an suggesting that there was another way of viewing this that could uh, burst the whole paradigm open. And I know that that's where you're coming from. So so tell us more about the, the perspective that that you share in, in okay. this context? I have two, two things I wanted to say. Just going back to, well, I have more than two things, but two points <laughs> just for this, this conversation. Going back to what you were defining prosperity, and I want to go back to that because, you know, I'm really excited about that right now, the whole concept of it, because I think for me personally in my life and, and the shift that I'm seeing on the planet is there has been such a separation from you know, who we are as, you know, as business owners and, and, you know, making our income and, you know, doing all those things in the material world and, and forging ahead that way. And then we have our spiritual side, yeah. are, you know, our connection to source and divine, but that's often untethered. Mm -hmm. And so we don't consider that, um, we don't equate that with uh, abundance and, you know, financial, we, we, you know, when we look at the material world, but really over the years, I have really brought that together in my life, and I really find that there is no separation now. The two are so connected, and to me, prosperity is a new definition of that spiritual connection on the material world, or in the plane, or in the physical world, I should say. So it's almost like a, it's bringing heaven on earth. Mm. So it's, it's your, in, in the, the true definition of prosperity, going back to the 13th century, is good fortune. But it's really the the good fortune of your health, your emotional well-being, your financial well-being, it's all around. You know, every aspect of your life is thriving and flourishing. And to me, that's prosperity. So it's not just equated to material possession. It's, you know, achieving uh, a state of your life where you, you know, you just, you're full. You're feeling full. You're feeling full of grace. There's love. There's That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And I love that. Yeah, the expression of that, and you're expressing that through your businesses and serving others and you know making money because there's an equal there's an exchange of that energy when you're serving others you have to prosper because <laughs> it's all energy that's being exchanged continuously so to me that's the new definition of prosperity it's almost like the new you know spiritual model for for our planet right now with what's happening god i love everything that you're saying i'm so wildly enthusiastic about everything i'm hearing totally there's a really interesting paradox that um that I'm reminded of uh, as you speak. Um, there are those, um, there are folks who, for whom th their focus is primarily uh, material, and um, they have not uh, found a balance with the spiritual matters. There's a couple folks like a that. Few. <laughs> They're dismissed. <laughs> and conversely, turn on TV. <laughs> yes, right. Conversely, yeah. there are many spiritual folks um, who, uh, oh, that's a good who point. have not grounded their oh, spirituality in matter. Yes, and so they have uh, an awkward or sometimes downright uh, difficult relationship with uh, money. with money. Yeah, um, both both of the ends of the spectrum are true. Both ends of the spectrum are equ are equally yep. out of balance. Yep. So Such is there a great anything point. that you could you could add to that, or or, or 
or, or maybe not. Why don't maybe. we do this? Let's take a break because uh, that'll give you a second to think about it. And then we'll come back <laughs> and we'll talk more about that. We will be back after um, after the people that pay the bills <laughs> around right. here. Um, our, our, our prosperity sponsors. And uh, we will be we'll be right back with Maria Simone. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. We're back on Cutting Edge Consciousness. This we're is, this back. Is, we're back. <laughs> with, this is Barnett Bain. I'm here with, uh, who are you again? Freeman, Freeman Michaels. Freeman That's Michaels. Freeman Michaels and our guest, Maria Simone. Before we um, left for the break, um, we were wondering if you had any thoughts on um, the significance on the the mattering of balancing both the spiritual and the mundane in order to come into some kind of healthy relationship with uh, with money, uh, with abundance and financial abundance, particularly. Absolutely. Well, to me, money is is very spiritual. It's a very spiritual energy. So I love the the concept of it. I love what it stands for. What it does in your life, how, you know, it, it can be used as a force for good, um, you know, all of that. And so, and, and I understand that the more I serve, the more I'm, uh, you know, helping others and creating solutions, the, the, the flow, it just flows into my life. And I think the challenge with people who tend to be of that more of a spiritual nature, I mean, we're all spiritual beings, but people that are on that plane, and it feels, I'm going to use the word untethered, you know, for, they're not, it's not grounded. Uh, it, the spirituality is actually less grounded in the physical. So they're kind of out there mm-hmm. hanging out in the upper chakras or, you know, really, you know, really dismissing the physical aspect like money and, and you know, the, the material things. But if you, you, when you do that, you really cut yourself off truly from that, that energy. You're really not supporting yourself because... You, you want to allow that flow of energy. If you're giving, if you're serving others, then it's just natural, natural that that energy should come back to you. And I, th- I think that people who are, who are more grounded in the here and now, that they, um, you know, allow themselves to open up to all the possibilities, will prosper more. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it makes you, perfect sense. And I think that with a lot of holistic practitioners, I mean, they're the most gifted people on the planet. They should be the richest people on the planet, you know, with all the, the support that they give us in changing lives and healing. And, and yet, you know, oftentimes they're complaining about being broke, and it doesn't have to be that way. They, they should be quite prosperous. So that's the lesson, I think, for, for many people right now is to open up to that energy and let it flow. I love it. There is um, uh, famously uh, said... Um, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar, and render unto God what is God's. I think that uh, pertains to exactly uh, this point. Of um, there is a place where it is um, where we want to own our uh, physicality. We want to own the substance, the matter, the beautiful, glorious dirt of our lives. We want to own it. It is every bit as spiritual as the loftiest esoteric practice. And there are places where we show up fully in the physicality of our lives, and there are places where we show up fully in the um, esoteric of our lives, and ours is to be a dweller in the two worlds, to bring them together. And, and, and to build a consciousness that's expanded enough where we can have um, this dimensional experience um, not in perfect balance because I think that's another one of the trip chords where people are uh, or maybe I can just speak personally where I'm uh, oh, maybe siloed in particular ways there's certain aspects of my experience that I'm very comfortable with and other aspects that are less integrated uh, in fact that's one of the words we've used a lot on this show is the idea of moving into uh, a place of integration the word integrity that it means integrated so there's more of a sense of the dimensions of my experience um, and, and that specifically often is where there's a, a, a way to be curious and to see the aspects of imbalance as opportunities. And that's kind of where I wanted to move you to, because I know that's a part of your work as well, where we can see places where uh, instead of being overwhelmed by it, there's this uh, curiosity and this opportunity to grow in a particular area of our lives. Yes. So I'd love it if you spoke to that. Okay. Well, a couple of things I want to say, too. I just want to address the, uh, what's happening, too, for many people in the last few years. Um, because of, you know, what we've heard in the media or just the conversations, you know, it's, it's 
we there's a lot of talk about the economy, you know, quote unquote the economy. <laughs> it's like a catch all for everything now. And you know how tough it is and the the credit markets are shrinking and the investors are gone. And, you know, we're hearing all these sto- stories about the economy. And I think it's really time for everyone just to take a deep breath uh, and really understand that the money hasn't left the planet. Yeah. Okay? So we, so for, for the last few years, I really have noticed quite a bit, I mean, really, uh, it's very loud to me, that people have gotten to a place of making do without or their natural flow of conversation is, I can't afford this, or I'll wear, I'll do all these jobs in my businesses, or I'll, you know, I'll take on more than I, I'm comfortable with because I can't afford to hire. You know, it's like this is what we're talking about as business owners, as practitioners, or, you know, people are out there. And um, uh, it, it doesn't have to be that way. This is something that was, it was kind of like this is just a, now our new belief. But the resources are out there. There are plenty. There's plenty of investors. There are plenty of customers for us. You know, it's there. And so I just want people to start understanding that. You know, you're you're putting yourself in your own, uh, you know, box. So you're saying people have become so reactive to what is going on in the outside world. Contraction. They mm-hmm. contract. They form new beliefs, and they become it's self-perpetuating. Yeah, yeah it's there's, self-perpetuating. There's been a, uh, a really quite a contraction, and I see it quite a bit in uh, and because I work in the my. My contact for evolu- spiritual evolution and growth is business. Some people use health, some people use relationships. I chose business as a, a path of evolution because I don't think we wake up in the morning out of the blue and think, oh, I think I want to transform today. Uh, for me, most people wake up and think, oh, my God, I can't pay the bills, or I'm losing my job, or my business is failing. That's, when we, that's the point of transformation for many people. And so that's, I use business as a context to help people do that. So that's where it shows up for me, and this is what I see. So yes, there's a con- there's really this general contraction that's not necessary. First of all, so I just want to let people know that there's really actually plenty of resources. So we have to start shifting the conversation, and the best way to do this is to ask different questions instead of immediately saying I can't afford this or I'll make do without. You want to start asking yourself how can I afford this? What do I need to make this a success? Like just start asking ourselves more abundant questions instead of denying ourselves Mm -hmm. this abundance just start allow breathe it in start allowing it in so those are some of the ways that you can shift um the other thing that i really believe and i I, this i'm so i think this is so critical right now is uh, first of all the lone ranger syndrome is not sexy anymore okay we we are in a beautiful cooperative society right now there's a lot of support there's a lot of resources for us Yet many people are on this path, like alone. They isolate themselves. They don't ask for help. They try to do everything. And I, I want to put out there that if you are doing jobs in your business or you're doing things in your life that you don't enjoy doing, that you're not good at, and that, quite frankly, you would get fired from someplace else, how do you think that's serving you in your life, <laughs> you know, in your business? How does that bring you joy? How does that inspire you? How do you... How do you actually get things done if you're not doing very, you know, a good thing for yourself? So I want to encourage people to start creating that void in their life instead of holding on and saying, I'll, you, know, you know this cliche, oh, the entrepreneur wears many hats. I don't know who made that up, but that's not true. You don't have to do A controller. <laughs> uh, yeah, Some, someone very clearly caught in the dirt of the struggle. So look, at, there's, a, there's, a whole, there's a whole opportunity here that I'd like to jump on because I know there's a part of the conversation that extends beyond uh, so many old models. And, I'm, and, and what you're speaking to, that as things, uh, as the construct, as it were, starts to come apart, right? The way we've held things comes apart. And it, it, it may come apart in a, a material sense. There's not, you know, the stresses of, of the money and the things that we've been doing le- working less and less effectively. That's true. Um, but there's another whole way of looking at this where there's uh, an expanding opportunity. And I almost feel like there's two directions to go. Now, this is me speaking. I'm not sure if we share this. But one way is, and it's a tendency almost, to crunch back. Like, ugh. And we see businesses doing this. Businesses, we see countries. We, Greece. Things aren't working, and they just keep pushing harder and harder. Well, if we just work longer. Tighten the belt. Tighten the belt and, and work harder. It'll be okay. <laughs> and the truth is there's this, this whole other way of processing and seeing things that blows that out. Uh, Barnett was talking about a, a, a 3D copy machine that actually manufactures in real time anything. 
You know, uh, this is not so your your mom and pop mentality of well, this is how we build it, and this is what we do, and then we build a factory. This thing it obliterates those models. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's a whole broad spectrum of stepping, like no time in human history. You got to be okay with uncertainty, but anything's possible, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's an exciting Absolutely. conversation. I think it's so often when people get scared, they crunch back to the old conversation. And it's okay. I'm not diminishing it. I understand it. But there's a new conversation to me that's far more exciting. And it's about up over the horizon, right beyond what I can see, that I feel is drawing me. And, and there's an offer in that. It's, it is a lot. it's mystery. You don't get to know. But, but there's been enough peak holes, as it were, that suggest that a lot of the models we've been working with aren't working. Well, Maria, you just spoke um, to something that I would love you to unpack a little bit more. One of these hallmarks that Freeman is talking about, <coughs> you spoke to it, you, you mentioned um, uh, co-creativity, working in collaboration, uh, working with others. This is a quality of, mm. pro- of prosperity. The lone I love wolf. that language. Being a lone wolf is not a bountiful, a prosperous mindset. Yeah. But being strong enough to lean on others is a dignified, bountiful, prosper, prosperous mindset. And uh, you spoke to that. I'd love you to. I'd love you to drill down a well, little bit more. Into it's a that. very. Um, uh, you know, I'm. I'm. I build businesses uni- using universal law, and so we look at. Um, we know that the universe abhors a void. Right. So if there's a void in something, it will be filled. <laughs> and so what I think what happens is people are in that mindset where I'll make do without or I'll do this all on my own. There's nobody to help me. I have to get this done. So I will do all the jobs. I will do all this work. And what happens is you, you, there's no space for ever, anyone to show up and support you. And I think if we all started trusting that the resources are out there, they, they truly, I mean, from a you know, from a practical business building, um, you know, place, I, I'm telling people as a multi-business owner, I'm letting everyone know that we are in a new era of cooperation. There is more support from you. There are plenty of mentors. There are plenty of people who will barter with you, who will partner with you, who will collaborate in ways that you can't even imagine has nothing to do with money. So if you can just start adopting that, the next thing is you have to create the space for that to happen. So the more that we start firing ourselves, the more that we really uh, commit to being, and this goes back to the whole prosperity mentality, you want to commit to be having joy in your business. You want to commit to doing the things that you're passionate about. And the more you can stand up for yourself and say, no, this doesn't make me happy. I'm not good at this. Mm -hmm. And just start stepping back and say, no, this isn't isn't my job. There's somebody else I can do it better. And allow for that space for people to start showing up in your life and just be aware of who starts coming into your life and then so now you're creating a space for that to happen because you're giving yourself permission for that to happen and it's all about uh this also goes back to receiving and self-worth and you know there's a lot of that that's a whole other show but but the easiest thing is to start creating that space take a stance for it say i would like some support here i want different expertise i want to fire myself i would like to attract you know, this type of person, or I want this kind of help, or I'm tired, I'm tired, I want a break. Who can help me? Start asking yourself different questions. But see who shows up in your life. You're going to start... We can try that, Friedman. <laughs> Repeat after me. I would like <laughs> some support here. Spence? <laughs> Spence is it. I would like some support. <laughs> but it happens, like, it's instant. I mean, it's like instant manifestation when you start shifting like that. And then, and then you notice who starts showing up, and then the next thing is to actually start asking. And that's probably <laughs> that's another big step for people is to really um, allow others to show up and to ask for help. And that is not a sign of weakness. That's actually, as you said, it, it is a sign of great strength. Well, and what strength. you and what you and what you spoke to earlier. Look, the the truth is, there's a lot of folks that are are working in a, a, a again. We we talked earlier about the developmental stages. So they're we're working at a particular level where their struggle is dominating their experience. And, and, and so uh, one of the ways that this happens is to begin to move into the sense of vision. That's the sort of horizon piece I was t- talking about. And, and when we have a sense of vision 
and, and a, a vision that's generous and generative, a vision that people can get behind. A vision that's giving. It's bigger an offer. Than, and bigger than you. That's right. It's an offer bigger than that you. people can share in. Because that's really the, that's where we get back to the, the, the thread, the frequency, if you will, of the collaborative spirit and the cooperative stuff. Because that, that shared vision, the opportunity to be part of something, as, as you were just saying, Barnett, bigger than me, that's exciting. But again, when we are stressed, and, and, and this is maybe part of the process, there's this tendency to crunch down. We, to give it to, we give it to the least of ourselves. But, you know, Maria, you use language, which I am, I, I'm going to borrow. So I thank, I'm thanking you right now. You'll be hearing it from me a lot. <laughs> That's right. Uh, to be, to be um, clear enough and, and self-respecting enough to fire myself yes. from the areas that I don't enjoy, or and that, you're not good or at, that, that I'm not good at, yeah. or that I hold as uh, burdensome, in service to your vision, in, in service, service to, to yeah. possibility, in service, in service to my own self-respect, yes. and, and to my own sense of of fulfillment and joy and grace. I will unfold if I don't get in my own way. <laughs> that's a beautiful <laughs> expression. It's a, it's a, that, and, that, and that's a generous offer. I mean, again, you know, uh, part of what the challenge is is we get caught, uh, and, and it's the victim. We get caught in this kind of mentality where we're tripping over ourselves. And, and I feel like for so many people, it's almost a click, a mindset click, and that's what you support, and, and that's why we're so grateful to have you here with us today. What, uh, let, uh, let's let's give folks some information because yes, yes. I know there's uh, stuff coming up that you're doing, uh, Maria. That I love to get people to uh, uh, be able to. It's pros. It's 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 prosperity. No, forgive me. I'm forgetting it. It's tell where me the website. Can, where again. can <laughs> our listeners find out more about what you're up to? What's next and how they can participate? That's okay, what well, we want. Okay, thank you so much. Well, most immediately, I think people would be very intrigued if you are. In business, if you are a service professional, if you want to increase the prosperity in your life, um, I would go to fundyourlaunch.com. Fundyourlaunch.com. It's L at not lunch, sorry. <laughs> but, th- but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> not that we're saying that <laughs> there's anything wrong with that. Have lunch <laughs> first and then, then go to fund lunch your launch. <laughs> and I, because I'm quite, I have raised millions of dollars for startups to really move into, you know, creating the flow of abundance of resources so that you can get your job done. and and get, you know, achieve whatever goals you wanted in business. And so I'm, I share a lot of strategies with people. We have a program coming up. I have a lot of free stuff. And so fundyourlaunch.com would be very interesting and different for people to connect to. Get, you know, this, this actually continues the conversation we're having today. Fundyourlaunch.com. And then the other um, place I encourage people to go, because they can get a, uh, some free goodies, is the, in, um, uh, not the, it's www.enlightened. Entre- Entrepreneur Summit, enlightened entrepreneursummit.com, and they can download a free report 10 strategies for staying in the flow as a, or being in the flow as an enlightened entrepreneur, which also explores some of the concepts we're talking about today. Now, how do you step up as this more spiritual entrepreneur and really create the success? You know, real, I, I mean, my clients are creating multi, multi, uh, multi, multi million dollar businesses, moving into billions of dollars in revenue. And they're embracing these strategies. So these, this is not pie in the sky. This is real business. Now. I love it. How we're doing business. I love it. Will I love you? It. Uh, will you? We we touched on so many uh, incredible um, topics that that we would love to further develop. Yeah, I feel like we just will got a taste. Will you uh, uh, be willing to come back and join us again, maybe in studio? I would love that. I, oh yes, I would love to come. And visit you. Well, That's we'd, we'd love to have right. you, we and we look forward to that. <laughs> okay. um, and and so we look forward to having you back. Uh, thank okay. you so much for spending time with us today. For those of you listening, we will be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain. Talking about prosperity. How talking fun was that? Prosperity, talking about prosperity. Uh, let's talk A about, let's talk about <laughs> Maria behind her back. <laughs> let's talk ab- let's about Maria. Bah- I, let's talk about her behind her back. What she's delightful. We, I don't have, I have, I have ever, all nice things to say about her. Well, you know, she's been very thing. helpful to us, too. We uh, sort of offline. She's been very helpful she's with us. She's given us guidance. Big guidance. Yeah, very, right. very uh, wonderful woman. Woman. And I love the new definition of prosperity. I love it. A new spiritual model. 
that's fantastic. It's such a great way. And what I said before is true. There, as much as we've talked about the, I love the plants, you know, working through the dirt and finding its way up with this promise of the blossom on the other end of the challenges, there, it, it happens in an instant. There are these clicks, at least there have been in my life, where in one moment, my consciousness shifts from a perspective to a whole new possibility. And while it may uh, creep back, we alluded to that, the slipping back into some of the pattern stuff that happens, the, the understanding that there's that moment where I, I glimpsed possibility um, draws me These peak more moments. More. Of yeah, peak glimpse. experiences. But don't you find that uh, any change, it always happens in an instant. That's what I'm the saying. The change always happens in an it's instant. It's a click. Now, you can take forever to lead up to the moment of change, but the change is a quantum movement. It is a quantum From movement. zero to one. Yeah. It's, it's, there's change, then there's no change. Uh, well, we've talked about this in terms of stories. There's a first story where you're really caught in your victimhood and when and, and you're- What well, happened to me? And what happened to me and your family of origin and, and you are, you know, because your dad says you are and your family says you are and your tribe says you are and there's no perspective that you can get out of that. Second story is we call it the triumph story where we can climb out of that. We start to see there's- Well, it's a reaction. It. it is a reaction. The second story is entirely- Yes, no, that's true. A, a reaction, reaction to the, first, to the story. first story. So yeah. the whole story is about how I overcame the first story. <laughs> right, but it's I, a, but it's I, a um, movement up. We're we're working the shoot, right? It we're is a develop. It is a developmental progression. That's it, it is a it, it is it. a more empowered story than being a victim. It because the second story is how I overcame being a victim. Right, right, right. I lost the weight. I married the right. girl. But it's I, it's very much still stuck in the same construct. It is. It's still from the same the same basic roots to s keep our plant analogy going here. But the third story is this. Uh, over the edge, it, it, over the horizon, where there's an element of not known that moves into a, there's an excitement about that. There's an excitement about the unfolding. And to speak to, back to the very first thing we said, there's an understanding that there's a natural expression of ourselves. There's a natural draw towards something greater than ourselves. Well, let's, and yet wholly let's pull it back. Ours Why don't you pull that unfold? back? Um, pull it back to the... Um, grace conversation yeah and to the knowing that you're enough that's it so in the in the, the third story you're enough in the there's nothing to fix there's no more seminars it's the last seminar there's nothing left in terms of going and fixing and repairing and and if i just knew this then i'd be okay the second story i mean it doesn't mean that the third story doesn't include the first and second story it does but it includes them in a gen gentle and gen gentle way it, you, you've used the expression, it's the divine feminine's arms holding these little fragmented aspects in service to where I'm going. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I want to add only to that, that we come in with a, in a relationship with um, prosperity, with money that yes. is, uh, that is very freighted with, um, um, this is how, this is my circumstances and this is what's happened to me. Uh, we move into, um, a struggle to compensate for it, to overcome it, uh, to be good enough. Uh, uh, first is I'm not enough, and then yeah. am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I, uh, do I perform well enough? Am I um, skilled enough at my job? Do I have enough degrees? And then comes another switch, if we're very fortunate, from am I good enough to I am enough. Yeah. When we understand that I am enough, for the first time, you know, in my own life, I'm beginning to more deeply explore the truth of that. It's, it's uh, still somewhat elusive, but I'm, I'm exploring it. And more and more, I am able to um, realize the truth of what grace is, mm. the truth of what it is, of that kind of entitlement is, the truth that um, as just as a flower blooms without any effort and birds fly without any effort because it comes naturally. Yeah. Um, they're not trying to be good enough. They're not trying to, um, to overcome something from the past. Uh, when I really let that in, I can um, begin to make peace with the parts of me that are frantic and that are trying to compensate and that are worried about the future and will yeah. I be supported. So it's a, 
um, it is a incremental. Uh, it's an incremental shift. Yeah, and 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 I love the qualities, the felt qualities in prosperity. Again, it's a distraction to just make prosperity money and 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 that's that's such an illusion, you know. It's it's such a it's such a um a programmed belief structure, but the wh- so when we tease back from the the form and, and and you've used this language so often, Barnett, and we say, "Well, wait, what's what's underneath the form? Not the what, but the why that's underneath the what. It, what what's underneath it? What's the feeling quality?" that I would have if I had enough money or if I had this or that? What am I really going for? What's really more aligned with a, a heart sense or a felt sense of, of my, own, um, my own spiritual, my own, my own spirit, my own essence, if you will? So that piece to me is very exciting because then prosperity becomes a real offer. It's not this looming thing like, I got to go figure out prosperity. I got to figure well, it out. It's a gift. More it's a than gift. A, it's, I understand the offer uh, piece. Um, it is a gift. And then when we understand that it is a gift and that uh, I am absolutely connected to that gift because I'm enough. Mm. Then it allows me to um, to be the offer. Mm. So I think that's th- I think that's probably where that. you're talking about. Yeah. It allows me to be the no, offer. It allows that. me to be to give um, to look to give uh, even more so than I'm looking to get, and to look to give um, in a way that is exalted, that is not transactional, yeah. that is not I'm giving, but my real agenda is I'm going to get. The it is a an agenda of I'm going to give for the joy of giving. I'm going to gi- give because I am going to be a part of the graceful unfolding of somebody else or something else. Uh, whether I am watering um, the plants in my garden, I am a part of the graceful unfolding of that, or I am uh, giving to somebody else uh, a kind thought. Uh, we or talked a smile. about this recently. We talked. I about think in real time we were someplace. Yeah, we were talking about um, reasons for giving, and in the past it was giving to be recognized, or even the crazy stuff. I mean, I grew up Catholic with the idea: if I'm really good and I give a lot, I get into heaven. Like the you're going to earn your way. You're yes. Gonna earn, these are again these what we call these second story uh, narratives that um, I can overcome. Uh, I can react to a feeling that I am flawed and overcome my flaw by giving being by manipulating really by boy. being the best boy or being <laughs> the smartest right. boy or being the or being the top dog or being the boss this is the american dream story um, i can come here and i can work my way to the top and then there's a finish line there's a ticker tape or there's like a tape i'm, I'm going to cross the finish line yeah. and i will have arrived but there are there gates is there no are gates that will open there is no arrival there is none, there, no there is no arrival and it's and and from the perspective you and i share it we're giving to ourselves we're giving to something that we consider ourselves part of so the idea of giving especially the heartfelt giving it's this sense of i'm i'm vested in this this is me um, so it's not about uh, the reward. It's about it's, it's the it's joy about of giving. It, it, it is the and fun it's about and the, the joy expression of, giving. of the parts of us that we. Uh, there's nothing but joy in this. The joy, the fun. Those are the frequencies that we're following. Like we've called yeah. it a scent. There's a scent of it, and the scent is is alluring, and it's got so much in it. And I'm you are following. giving to yourself. Yeah, you're not giving to your ego, mm. but you're giving to the. Um, the uh, awakening realization that maybe uh, my brother uh, is, I'm not my brother's keeper, but I am my brother. Right. So maybe it is true that I am not separate from anything else. Um, Beautiful. My ego would have me believe otherwise, but maybe when I become a giver, um, uh, those who are givers, you know, I remember reading um, Mother Teresa uh, talking about the joy uh, that she experienced just of being a giver, just mm. the joy of it, the ecstasy of being a giver. Mm. So I think um, that is a, um, um, a herald for me. It's a beacon of a possibility mm. that exists for all of us. Uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm attuned to that. I want to uncover 
the joy of being uh, that kind of a person who, who experiences such bliss out of contributing um, to others with a deeper sense of I am contributing to a wholeness of which I'm a, uh, of which I'm a part. That's beautiful, and that and that absolutely is what Maria was speaking to when she was talking about sharing, sharing our gifts, sharing with others with their gifts, celebrating each other, co-creating. This language is powerful. Because Celebration a is a part of the um, energies of prosperity. Absolutely. Celebration, um, triumph is a part. Triumph of a character, not of ego. A triumph, which is a is a, a victory that is more than winning. Mm. Winning is a second story thing. I'm going to crush it. Right, 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 right. But a, tr a victory that is more than winning. It's the, the triumphant satisfaction of having um, created something that is beautiful or something that works or have met a task and completed a task or manifested something, yeah. a relationship, a business. It's, uh, this, it's this higher principle. And I, I love that what we started with, the idea of a plant lifting and lifting and lifting and blossoming. Stretching and to the light. Opening to the light, that's it. And becoming uh, this beautiful um, creation. Unless hey, you're a night blooming jasmine. Well, you know, that, that has its own... you're stretching to the dark. Yeah, you're stretching to the moon or something There's light like in that. even in the dark. Of course Even in is. the darkest night, there is a light. Of course there is. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about the new definition for prosperity. I love the spiritual perspective. I like the idea that it's a, a, a grounded spirituality, that it's not... A, 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 it, is both, it is both rooted in the dirt. We're aware of where we've come from. We're aware of all the fragments. We hold them with a certain amount of compassion and with a, an understanding, and that those parts may still come up from time to time, but that we're reaching up with a sense that we're all of this. We are both where we've been and we are where we're going simultaneously. That's the offer of, of the third story, that it's big enough to hold where we've been with a perspective that is not good or bad, it's developmental, and that when we slip into it, we wanna move back again because there's something bigger for us. And then, and then it isn't like, uh, the, there's, there isn't this burden, there isn't this task, there isn't this, it isn't as, the, the struggle isn't necessary as much we can really be well, the okay struggle is a choice at some point the struggle becomes a choice that's the beautiful that that's an important point that's a really important point because it's it initially that's probably for another show we're at the pretty much at the end of our time here we're, we're in the last couple of minutes but yeah but it is a choice you know um i go into struggle and sandy says well what exactly what part of you am i hearing from that's right right. <laughs> is this a part that is absolutely current right here in the moment, uh. or is this a part that ha that is uh, has been conditioned and out of experiences from the past uh, that has been uh, disappointed or hurt or humiliated or shamed, or is holding something from the past? Am I hearing from a part of you that is six years old or 16 or 26 or 46? I'm certainly not hearing from you uh, right here and now, and I'd like to. Right. So it's interesting because Jasmine has something similar. She says, do you really want to? Do you really want to tell that story? Do you really want to go back there? And, 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 and a part of me does want to. I mean, a part of me. It's a part of me that's hooked into that story. But we don't want that part driving the bus. But I'm aware. Oh, that you part be is, in, uh, I want to be in relationship. That's I want right. to be in relationship with that part of me. Absolutely. That, ha that holds the world in that way and responds to the world from an old toolkit, I don't want to be so identified with it that it is running my life. That's it. I want to be related to it mm -hmm. so that I can recognize it, where it's what it's thinking, what it's feeling, and what its tools are. I can respond to it compassionately and, uh, and hold the line, but you're not running my life so that I can make my own choices. And to the degree we have compassion for that when it shows up in our experience based on the developmental stage being reflected back. In other words, we see something that's operating from this kind of I've got to get it mentality or there's a fight involved mentality or whatever it is, we can identify it as the part of us. We can hold it with the same compassion that we hold the fragment within ourselves yeah. Uh, that makes us able to respond in the world versus react. That makes us instruments of this potentiality that we're moving towards. So it's a really beautiful, uh, you know, dynamic dance, if you will, 
uh, moving towards this big offer, the big offer fun of dancing, prosperity. Uh, fun dancing and moving and um, uh, sniffing down the trail and, of and prosperity. And with that, we've with, got a boogie you. on to the next show. If you're listening on KKZZ and KVTA, stay tuned uh, for Coast to Coast. And uh, we are gr- so grateful that you tuned in today to listen to us today. Thanks for See listening. See you next week.